Hi, my name is Lee and welcome to my channel Cola Flipper. I'm a UK eBay reseller. I buy secondhand items at car boot sales and charity shops and I flip them online for a profit. Um, charity shop haul today. I haven't been to a charity shop for quite a while. Um, before lockdown um, and the whole, whole pandemic, I, um, I was working in a local town and it meant that on my lunch breaks I could pop into town and go through a number of different charity shops um, on my lunch hours. Uh, I was hitting 15 charity shops over the week um, and it was literally pop out, blast for as many as I could in an hour, get back and crack on with my normal day job. Since working from home, barely going to any charity shops at all. Um, the, literally the only time I would go to a charity shop now is uh, when I'm going to get change for the car boot sale. So I'll go to the local bank, pop out on a lunch hour, get a couple of hundred quid in change and then there's a charity shop right next to the bank, so I'll pop in there. That's it. However, today, we have a little bit of a haul. I think I've done quite well. The whole reason for going to the charity shop today was my eldest is going on some sort of wilderness school thing where she basically needed some trousers that it didn't matter if they get ruined and we haven't got anything like that. So all the stuff that she's grown out of, she's grown out of and we didn't have anything but newish trousers and jeans. So we went out looking for some scruffy jeans. So I went out charity shopping with my eldest, my 11 year old. Um, she got, she did quite well. She just wrapped me around her little finger and, and uh, she's done quite well out of it herself. But it's always nice if you're having to go to a charity shop anyway, we'll see if you can pay for the bits that you need with the bits that you can sell. And um, yeah, I've, I've done well. And I know a lot of people complain about charity shops and the, the pricing. And yes, some of the charity shops I went into today were priced quite high but that is where your knowledge comes in and I, I can't stress enough learning about your subject will make a massive difference learn your uh, will make a massive difference to seeing opportunities that you would normally walk straight past if you haven't already seen my uh, become a better reseller series please have a look and it'll just give you an idea of how if you've got an interest in a specific subject whether it's shoes clothing pots and pans, anything like that, and it shows you how you can research your niche and learn what items to pick up, and it will help you um, see the, the fantastic items that are there that you would normally walk past. So, um, I'll get straight on with it. So, first thing I picked up today was this. Now, as a gent, normal, typically, most people who are buying for themselves would walk straight past the ladies' clothing. A lot of resellers will also walk past the ladies' clothing because they don't feel comfortable looking at it. I don't give a monkey's what I look like. And what I'm looking for is something that I can sell and make a good profit on. I did walk past, I found a lot of good items today. I did leave some of them on the shelf or on the, the hangers um, because I've got a bit of a backlog. So I'm only trying to get stuff that's gonna make me a good profit. And for example, there was quite a few Hobbs dresses that I saw today for around the, the 20 pound mark. And yes, there's money to be made on them, but because I've got so much of that sort of stuff at the moment anyway, I left them because I was only gonna make 15 or so pound profit, so it wasn't really worth it for me. This, however, this is something a little bit special. Um, just looks like a, you know, your, your normal sort of black jumper. This is by Spanish company. Uh, I'm not 100% sure on the pronunciation. I think it's Loewe, and it's L-O-E-W-E. -E. What I'll do, I'll do a screenshot of the logo and pop it up in a, a screen thing separately. If you go and have a look at the uh, Loewe, um, it looks like it says low, but uh, I think it's Loewe. You look at their website, a jumper, the cheapest jumper you can find, about 450 quid. Their jumpers range from about 450 to about 750. Um, so I paid seven pounds 50 for that. Um, it feels like a cashmere um, merino mix. The problem is the label, um, the care label, the, the writings come off it because it's, it's warm. So I've taken a little bit of a punt. That might make it a little more difficult, but I should do quite well on it. There aren't many comps on eBay unfortunately because it, it's a it's a luxury brand um but if you just look up jumpers or go, look up the way they uh women's clothing sold i think there's four or five items on there 
and the cheapest one that sold used um, is still over a hundred pounds so conservatively let's say that seven pounds into 50 I've done quite well but the reality is as long as I'm happy to wait that could be closer to seven pounds fifty into maybe a hundred or thereabouts so again that's that's about learning your brands and knowing your brands because the charity shop you look at all the Ralph Lauren stuff the prices are quite high they don't know who the way they are I do and that's why I picked up a seven pounds fifty jumper that, that could make me a hundred quid or could turn into a hundred pound flip uh, so basically profit on that is pay for everything that my daughter has, has needed um, that we've bought for my daughter today one item potentially um, this next item a pair of jeans and these are by a company called seven for all mankind these are not particularly in fashion at the minute these are boot cut but I don't give a monkeys because they were a decent price again in this was in the Bernardo's this time Bernardo's their prices can be quite high but they they often have a, a pretty standard price for stuff so I've seen it where you've got all the jumpers and cardigans uh, a four or six pounds depending on um, they I, I assume they do look at the branding and think okay this is Primark or a cheaper brand they go at the lower end and the slightly higher ones all have the same price so this was a, a four pound pair of jeans um, so it was mixed in with Cedarwood State all the other cheaper high street type brands um, brand new go on the seven for all mankind website you're looking at around 180 to 200 pounds for a pair of jeans however this isn't um, a style that's in at the minute most of the mom jeans are the ones that everyone seems to like skinny jeans still quite go quite well for me so I don't know how well I'm gonna do whilst they may have been 200 odd pounds new the reality is I, I took a punt without doing comps um, thinking at four quid as long as I can sell them for 25 ish pound minimum that's still after all my fees etc probably gonna make about 17 quid profit which is fine uh, easy to pack is it a photograph um, is it a post um, is it a list so not too much of a drama there um, whenever you're looking at jeans check you've got your buttons check that the fly works check in the crotch for wear there were two pairs there and one of them had not worn through but it had worn where it looked like it was going to wear through quite soon so I left those behind um, otherwise these are in good nick not much of the way of, of wear at the uh, bottom hem which could be a problem especially for boot cut jeans so very happy with that not massively happy but that still should be four pound into minimum I would have thought it's going to be 25 I'll probably list them up at 40 something drop it down see how it goes I've got no problem sitting on those for a while happy with that also with regards to jeans and trousers I always found it really awkward photographing them I've tried hanging them on uh, on a hanger and taking a picture so hanging on the wall they, they just look awkward the way that they hang I've tried flat lays I think they look awkward there and I always just think they look a bit crap I went online and I had a look through and I found that um, professional uh, photographers who are, are doing all the, the pack shots for um, all your high street companies what they'll do a lot of the time is they'll do some flat lay pictures but they will also stuff the legs um, with like a a rigid paper I've got some wallpaper I picked up from a uh, car boot sale tore off a couple of strips scrunched it up stuffed it down the legs and it just gives the when you take the photo it gives you a, a more realistic view of what the jeans would look like on so I had a great big pile of jeans that I've been and, and trousers that I've been avoiding because I just got fed up with, with things not selling very quickly because I couldn't get a photo that wasn't awkward so what I've done last week, I blasted through 10 or so pairs where I stuffed and, and crushed, I rolled and crushed up uh, the wallpaper, stuffed it down the legs and taken photos. I'll, I'll put some screenshots up. And it just made them look much more natural. And within a couple of days of putting the new listings up, some of them have already started selling already. So whether it's just because I've got specific jeans that are very popular, whether it's uh, a slight difference because of the way I'm now photographing them, um, either way I'm happy and that's my new way of doing it so um, 
might be more work than some people are willing to put in. Sometimes flat lay works for everyone else, that's fine. But for me, I think I'm gonna continue a um, little bit of extra effort to put the wallpaper down the legs to make them stand out and make them look a little different. Uh, right. Big, heavy, cast iron saucepan. Or I guess it's a milk pan because it's got the little pouring lip. Now, I saw this, we hit, how many charity shops did we hit? We hit six charity shops and um, we did that in about two and a bit hours. So part of that time was for my daughter looking for her bits and pieces. If I was on my own, I would have gone through a lot faster. And I have actually videoed it. First time I've ever taken my um, uh, action camera, had it strapped to my backpack. So I've, um, I'll do some footage of that. So depending on when I release the videos, it has either already come out or it will come out at some point. But um, yeah, you'll get to see how I, I work in a charity shop looking through for items. Now this, um, we all know that the Cruze items go very well. This is not the Cruze, this is a different company and it is Berghoff. I'll, um, I'll put a picture of the logo up so you can see it. So cast iron, enamel on the inside and I think that is an ash handle. Um, not quite sure of the age, I don't know how long Berghoff have been making um, this sort of thing. I I think they go for about 40, 35, 40 quid. Um, this is gonna be, he it's, I'm gonna say it's under two kilos. It's quite heavy, but I'd say it's 10 under two kilos. Five pounds out to around the 35, maybe 40 pound mark, and that'll be great. Personally, because there is a little bit of, you've got some, like a varnish finish at this top end, and just at where the join is, that's rubbed. I might sand that down a little bit and either re-varnish or re-oil it to make it look its absolute best. As you can see, the inside is sparkly clean. So I think I should do quite well out of that. Um, so yeah, Berghoff, another good brand. I'm not saying that all cast iron pans are good, but certain ones are. The Cruze is good, Berghoff is good. What you could do is do a search on eBay, put in cast iron saucepan, and then you put a little minus symbol, uh, the as in plus and minus, but minus Cruze, minus, well, uh, or Le Cruze, or minus Le Cruze, or minus Cruze. And that will then deduct them from the search. So you'll only see non Le Cruze um, cast iron pans. Search for sold, search, then order it highest to lowest. And you can see what are the brands that are cast iron that are not Le Cruze sell for a decent amount of money. Take it in. Some cast iron pans, not worth a lot. Some of them worth an awful lot. Stahl is another really good one. And it just gives you another couple of brands to keep in your mind. So if you happen to see something out in the wild and you haven't got time to check your phone or you're not able to do it comfortably, you've got those three or four other brands already locked away up here and you can make pull the trigger and get a good, good bargain at the right time, at the right price. Um, so yeah, really happy with that. Right. In uh, one of the shop, what was it? I think it was a, I think it was the RSPCA uh, shop. Again, looking for bits and pieces for my, my oldest. As we get towards the gents' shoes, I could see the little tag at the back and I thought, ooh, recognize that. That's uh, some Dr. Martens. These are new old stock um, and the reason I can tell that they're new old stock is that, well, A, there's nowhere whatsoever on the heel or on the inside, so they've never been used. They're quite dusty. There's no perishing of the elastic. Often you'll find it's all, if it's been used a lot, the, the, the elastic's gone and you'll get it all wrinkly. They haven't been stored particularly well because it's, it, it's folded in, but there's no marks on them absolutely pristine and also when you look on the inside the all the writing on the inside is, is still there now things that stand out about these over a lot of other dr martins so these are a, a dealer boot or a chelsea boot things that i noticed immediately made in england both on the sole and and inside the other thing to note is um inside it says Made in England, the original Dr. Martins with the air cushion sole, leather upper, man-made sole, and they are made by Solivar. By Solivar. Actually, no, these aren't, these are. 
So, all made in England. These ones that say made, so Dr. Martin by Solib, uh, Solovar, S-O-L-O-V-A-I-R. Solovar used to make them under license for Dr. Martin until the mid 90s, so around 95, 1995, they could then make, uh, whatever the deal was, they were then able to make their own boots under the Solovar uh, name. So that you can find pretty much identical boots made by both Dr. Martin and Solovar, but the ones that are Solovar, as far as I understand, um, were made after 1995. If it says Dr. Martin by Solovar, it's pre-95. So these, technically have been new old stock vintage, which means I should be able to get a decent price for them. Solovar ones and Dr. Martin ones are way over like a £150 mark new, probably 180 odd, I'd say, ballpark. So to get new old stock vintage, I still should be able to do well. I've had to pay up £25 for each for the, the Oxblood and the Black Pair. Um, so, that with £25 out, that does sound like an awful lot of money to spend on a pair of shoes in a charity shop. However, they are brand new old stock, which means there's decent value to them. Ballpark figure minimum I should be able to make on these is around 65, 70 quid, I'd say. Um, but I will probably push for around the 100 mark, maybe just over, maybe just, just over 100. If someone offers me around the 100, I'll take that. Um, could I list them as they are? They're a little bit dusty, so maybe just go over them with a, uh, a uh, boot brush. But we all know I like to clean a pair of shoes, so I think I'll probably give them a polish, make them look their absolute best, um, and see where we go. But £25 each, the charity shop's done well out of me. I will do better. Um, yeah, they probably could have sold them for more um, online, but... I'm going to add value and I'm going to take damn good photos so everyone makes a bit of money but I'll do well out of those. Now these, these are probably my favourites. This is the sort of thing that I wore to school when I was a miserable teenager but in black. So I didn't have the, these are 10 hole, I had uh, 8 hole ones when I was at school. And these again, these have been used, these are not new old stock. But they are again vintage these again are made in england ones they still do have uh if you go on the dr martin website you've got the made in england area and they the other ones are usually made in vietnam i think but these are the with the bouncing sole airwear um raw leather on the inside these are vintage looking at the way that the eyelets are pressed these these are vintage i i don't know the actual dates of when the original made in England ones were because I think then they were all then made in Vietnam and China and then now they've split it and you've got your made in England range which they charge a premium for. Ten hole boots I'm pretty sure they're £180 upwards brand new but a lot of people want them worn in. These are in really really good shape got a nice bellows tongue. Um, I'll probably supply them with these laces, but I've also got yellow laces, so I might lace them with the yellow as well, take photos, and just include the laces with them. Add a bit of extra, um, uh, gives it a bit of oomph in the pictures, but it also means that the, the buyer's got, got something. My, my pair will have two pairs of laces, the original, and a spare yellow pair. That will help. I need to give them a clean, give them a, a polish up with the cherry red. These ones were 20, I think. Yeah, 25, 25, 20. So that one charity shop has got 70 pounds out of me. They have done well. Um, I'm hoping then I'll get about 100 for those, 100 for those. I would easily get 70 for each pair. I'll push for 100 with those. I might list these higher. I might, once I've got these cleaned up and looking good because they're nice and soft and worn in, but they'll be cleaned and polished. I might push for a little bit more, maybe 130. Again, if someone offers me around the 100, I'll probably take it. Um, loads of wear left in the heel. They're in good condition. I'm really, really happy with that. So um, yeah, I spent, spent a bit today. I, I haven't quite tied it up, but yeah, 20, 25, 25, uh, four pound, 750, and a fiver for the pot. 
Um, so hopefully 40 pounds in, let's say minimum 25, but I'll push for a bit higher. Uh, potentially 100, but even if it's 50, that's great. Uh, minimum 70, push for 100 for each of those. And then for this one, closer to the 100 pound mark. Not too bad of work for a couple of hours in the morning where I was meant to be getting stuff for my daughter. We got all the bits she needed, this will easily pay for it and make a lot, lot more. Um, just, it's, yes, these are expensive, but I've taken the opportunity that was there because I know I can make a lot, lot more. It is worth the investment in these because they are a sought after item. Um, I think that's it for the minute. So um, I will, if I haven't already put out the video, um, if the video is already done for the charity shop, um, the charity shop footage, I'll link that in there. If not, that will be coming out soon. And you can see how quickly I flick through the racks. Um, other than that, if you've got anything else you'd like to see, um, let me know in the comments uh, and take care of yourself and I shall see you soon.